It was truly the greatest show in sports last night as we had the greatest banana ball game of all time. We are about to find out if the fellas can bring back the magic here in night two of the 2023 Banana Ball World Tour, loved by Zappos. It was an absolute thriller last night here in West Palm Beach in the ballpark of the Palm Beaches. It only took an hour and 54 minutes to get through nine innings of action. A 2-2 tie headed to the ninth, and the Bananas ended up scoring three runs in the bottom half to eclipse the two runs the party animals had put up in the top and win it 5-4. Dalton Maldo, Dalton Malden with the final swing of the bat. Let's take a look at the nine rules of Banana Ball that make this so, they, makes this so fast-paced and different from baseball. This game is called Banana Ball. We have nine rules. Rule number one, every inning counts. If you win the inning, you get a point. How do you win an inning? You score more runs than the other team. And the final inning matters the most, with every run counting as a point. Number two, there's a two hour time limit. When we hit the two hours, boom, it's over. Unless there's a tie. And then it goes to our one-on-one -on -one showdown. Pitcher versus hitter with only one fielder. The pitcher has to stop the hitter, or the hitter has to score. Number four, there's no bunting. Bunting sucks. We're eliminating it. All right, swing the bat. Next rule, you can steal first. If a pitcher throws a wild pitch, I don't care what count it is. All right, hitter take off. Number six, there are no walks. Walks are now sprints. On ball four, the hitter takes off to first. He can advance to as many bases as he wants while the catcher has to throw the ball to every single position player before it becomes live. Number seven, batters cannot step out of the batter's box. You step out, it's a strike. Next rule, no mound visits. Coach does a slow little walk out to the mound. He's just delaying the game. Fans don't need that. We're done with that. And finally, what's the most fans first rule you could have? Well, let the fans actually play. If a fan catches a foul ball, it's an out. Everyone's trying to be a part of the game. Now fans can be. And that's Banana Ball. Welcome back inside the ballpark of the Palm Beaches. Now that you know the rules of the game, let's get a little more intimate with the Bananas starting pitcher, Christian Dearman, Mr. Electric. Just a fantastic ball player. A CPL champion. Breakfast Bowl champion. The pride of Florida International University. Christian Dearman, the man on the mound with the Ric Flair Space Odyssey combo entrance. You do not have time to think in the box. Dearman gets the ball, comes set. He's really been the best pitcher on either side. It's like he's built for banana ball. Christian Dearman menacingly, menacingly shaking his derriere. That is fantastic. Oh. Did he just, was that gritty? <laughs> I don't know what it was. He signed Leo DiBenedetto's bat for good measure. Brought in on a squad car. This is Christian Mr. Electric Dearman. Oh my goodness, how fast was this inning? Swing and a miss. Dearman with a big time K. Christian Dearman, a little wop action. <laughs> Fantastic work. And now Dearman's ready to rumble. This is Mr. Electric, signing off. If you were with us last night, you heard Dearman on the mic doing color commentary with me for three innings. The man in the yellow tux, Jesse Cole, said, let's play ball and let's start the clock. A two hour time limit, as you just learned on Banana Ball. And as I mentioned earlier, we got through nine innings in an hour and 54 minutes last night, so it should be nothing. The stats you see for Dearman from last year's World Tour. His ERA top notch between both sides. He starts Breland Almodova off with the strike. And we're ready to rumble. No stepping out of the box in Banana Ball. Christian Dearman works just about as quick as they come. He takes advantage of his batters being trapped in there. Now, Breland could have stepped out of the box 
with a foul ball. That's the only time that you can get a breather as he is sawed off. And still has an 0-2 count on him. The left fielder for the party animals went one for three last night. He got the first hit in banana ball history with our new yellow balls. And now he is hit by a pitch and he goes down like Frazier. He's gonna need the assistance of his party animals to get him over to first base. Drawing some chuckles from another sold out crowd here in the ballpark of the Palm Beaches. Full capacity, over 8,000 strong. Filling in the stands and the berm out in right and left field. Breland A-OK. -okay. Always a threat to steal. Last year in the World Tour was three for six in his attempts to swipe bags. Here's Dalton Cornett, who was behind the plate last night. Moves over to shortstop tonight. Just about as good a utility player as you can find. That one back to Dearman. There's one. Oh, trick play under the legs. Ryan Cox turns one of the sweetest double plays you'll see in your life. The hit by pitch erase, just like that. And we are rolling here tonight in night two of the 2023 World Tour. Cornett, two for four with a bomb and a double last night. Yearman gets the best of them in round one. Now Reese Hampton, the center fielder. One for four an evening ago. Switch hitter, of course, in the lefty batter's box with the righty on the bump. Dearman a banana last year's world tour. Take a look at the stats. He was excellent in the on-base percentage department. 455, nearly getting on the bags. One out of every two times to the plate. It's been with the gateway. Been with the Gastonia Grizzlies, pardon me, the last two summers. And is ready for a 2 2 count with two down. Guy who hit 350 with the Grizzlies a couple summers ago in the Atlantic League. He could have stolen first base on that. Banana ball, you can steal on any pitch. Of course, we all advise you only trying to do that on wild pitches and pass balls. We didn't have a sprint last night. There are no walks in banana ball, and here's your first sprint of the 2023 tour. All seven fielders behind the pitcher and catcher have to touch the ball before they can tag a runner out. And Reese with great speed is going to get to second pretty easily. Anders with the traditional defense. The catcher, Eric Jones, firing to short first. You get the middle infielders out of the way. Everybody collapses in on second. First and third base, then get to touch the ball. And then you go left, right, and center field, trying to put a tag on the runner. Here is the boomer, Bryson Bloomer. Three for four last night with a monster shot. A homer into left center field, and he's plugged. Second hit batter of the first. He played with Christian Dearman on the 2021 Collegiate Bananas team. They won a Coastal Plain League championship together. Dearman, a three-year college banana. That was his swan song. Bloomer, a two-year collegiate banana. Won championships each of the last two summers in Savannah. There's a check swing, foul ball is going to get out of play, so no chance for a fan to make a catch on it. Jake Skull, the first baseman. Seven years of minor league baseball experience. Five with the Texas Rangers organization, two with the Yankees. Holding down first base tonight. He was one for four last night with a triple. An RBI, a run scored, and a couple strikeouts. Party Animals threatening early on. Two men on and two down. That one bounced to third. Backhanded by Jackson Olsen. The TikTok superstar across the diamond. Dan Oberst can't field it. 
and heads up base running. Reese Hampton comes on in to score. Party Animals with an early lead. They've got a run here in the first, and still guys on first and second. That's gonna go as a rare E6. Uh, check that, E5. On uh, Jackson Olsen. No RBI for Jake Skull. And now Tanner Thomas, the right fielder, two for four with a ribeye last night, as well as a stolen base. Big cut and a miss, a collegiate banana in 2018 and 2019, a teammate of Christian Dearman's at Tallahassee Community College, as well as the bananas in the 2019 summer. They were roommates together on last year's tour. Now separated, Tanner Thomas with Dalton Malden. Dearman last night on the broadcast said he needed a little more space from the guys. Tanner Thomas also dominated him in the pregame ceremonies as Dearman wins that battle. And while Tanner Thomas walks off the field shaking his head, Vincent Chapman did the worm on the old strikeout call. So the party animals get one run across. Bananas will need one run to tie the inning, two runs to win it. It was a six minute and 30 second inning. Let's throw it down to our banana ball statistical savant, Josh Tolevsky, to talk about last night's most valuable show. Today. Thank you very much, Biko. That's right, we're here to talk about one of the newest features in banana ball games this season the showman of the night, and as you can see by the artwork done by Kara Heater, we're here to talk about last night's showman, Dalton Malden. Now, he started the game off very well. He serenaded the crowd here at Grayson Stadium, and then getting into the game action, in the third inning, hit a walk-off RBI double to put the bananas on the board. Now, flash forward, top of the eighth inning, a ball hit by Jason Swan, and Dalton went through the legs and threw it to first and recorded the out. He got his first trick play out of the season. And then of course, in the bottom of the ninth, after the Bananas tied the game at four, Dalton Malden came up and hit a ball 400 feet into center field and a walk-off double that won the game for the Bananas and rightfully earned him showman of the night. And tonight, we saw him perform pre-game. He did Phil Collins in the air tonight and we might be in store for some more musical moments from the songbird of our generation. That's all I've got from you on Dalton. Biko, back up to you, buddy. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Tulevsky. Informative as always. That's how Dalton Malden earned the very first showman of the night in Bananas history. An excellent performance from the songbird of our generation. And terrific drawing work. I want to credit Josh, but I think that was our Director of Marketing, Kara Heater, with the artistic skills. Brandon Sherman, loose on the bump, and the funky southpaw has Eric Jones, the bananas catcher tonight, out in front of the first offering. Good stop there by Joe Lytle behind the dish. The extra hitter last night, making his debut in the field as a pro party animal. Another big swing and a miss from EJ, who was one for three with a two-bagger last night. Sherman taking his time. Very different feel than Deerman, who is dying to get back on the rubber for the Nanners. That one's gonna be chopped. Brandon makes the play. Pivot to first, and he gets the job done. Retires the pride of Jacksonville, Florida, the Davidson product. Here comes Dan Oberst. First baseman, one for three with the strikeout last night. Three-year collegiate banana. Last year's world tour leader in batting average. Hit 440 across the 14 games. He's also on the ground. Bryson Bloomer across the diamond. Gets his former CPL teammate just barely. And a quick two outs for the Shermanator. Brandon on the bump made his Banana Land debut in the summer series this past August. The pride of Long Island. Played a couple years for the Long Island Ducks in the Atlantic League. Has been playing in the Zaria League in Brooklyn. And Bananas assistant coach Adam Byron was able to find him 
took the trip from Jersey City to Brooklyn, and boy, what a product did he get. Sherm was fantastic in the summer series. Quickly ahead of Dakota McFadden, the designated hitter. Came in for the ninth inning last night on the mound. One of a few terrific two-way products we have on both teams. Gave up a couple runs, didn't get a lot of help from his defense. Had two of the three errors in the ball game occur while he was on the bump. Spent most of last year's tour as a designated hitter. Finish up on Sherm, he had a 2.7 ERA in the summer series. Best for any party animal. Just misses the outside corner there. Funny enough, he had no strikeouts in his three outings. Looking for his first one as a party animal here. Brings a fastball, high 80s, he'll touch 90 with it. A slider around 78, knuckle curve, low 70s. And a knuckle ball in the mid 60s. He thought he had strike three there. Instead, we'll have a 2-2 offering coming. He ties him up. There's strikeout number one, and Sherman fired up coming off the mound. Party Animals win the first inning, one run to nothing, and they take a one point to zip lead here in night two of the 2023 World Tour, getting up close and personal to Savannah and Caitlin's cameras there. I'm sure we'll get some post game footage from that. We'll turn it down to Jesse Cole on the field for the world's slowest race. Mason and Avian, and they all have to get in crawling position to see who's gonna get to the finish line first. Put all right, on your mark. On your mark, get set, go! And this is why they call the world's Swiss race. <laughs> They are staring each other down. Avian is picking grass. Unfortunately, Dick Bell looks upset. Wait! Thriller. Couldn't have said it any better myself, Mr. Cole. You never know what you're going to get out of the world's slowest race. The more toddlers, the better, because oftentimes the vast majority of them aren't going to move their keisters at all. Thank you to everybody watching on YouTube. Game two out of 87, uh, the 2023 World Tour. Stop number one out of 33 cities and 20 states as we traverse just about every corner of the U.S. Christian Deerman back out on the bump. Joe Lytle swinging first pitch, deep drive down the left field line. And it's going to reach the seats. A fan does not catch it on the fly, so he's safe for now. And he'll have to jog on back from second base as he gets back in the batter's box. We're lucky to welcome last night's starting pitcher for the Bananas, Mr. Kyle Lewix into the booth. How you doing, Cowboy Kyle? Pico, I could not be happier to be in your presence and back in the booth with you. Uh, just, It just feels right, buddy. Spent a lot of time up here palling around, but not in the West Palm Beach broadcast booth as Joe Lytle, the catcher, is ready for a 1-2 offering. It's going to be 7-8-9 here for the party animals. And he fights that puppy off. Lytle won for four last night. Couple strikeouts. And the extra hitter roll. It's a little bit different view up here than down in the dugout, huh? Yeah, a little different. A lot of foul balls early in this game. A little bit of raindrops, but, you know, that doesn't stop any fun. 
There's another one. Catch it. High fly ball towards foul territory. Dan Oberst runs out of room. Oh, no catch. No oh, catch. I don't think that was caught cleanly. The fans celebrated like it was. But that's why it is so important to have our umpires flying over there because the fans want to be the hero, you know? They had an eye in the sky. I saw it clear as day. You know, I actually had a foul ball out uh, last year when we were here in that uh, similar area over there. Another 2-2 offering. Lytle fouls it off. Good battle here between Deerman and the Party Animals catcher. How good does that feel when a fan does the job for you? It's so awesome playing here in West Palm Beach. I mean, you got you got eight fielders in the field, and then you've got 8,000 out in the stands. So in between <laughs> 8,000 8, and 8, I like my odds. Deerman Chris chunks his headphones. <laughs> He's tired of them. He doesn't like that song. They're getting in the way of Mr. Electric. Payoff pitch. It's the second sprint of the night. Lytle taking off. All seven bananas have to touch the ball, and Joe's not going to test the defense. Just like in baseball, when ball four is fired, he's going to take one base. So no sprints last night. First time in banana ball history. And we've had two in less than two innings tonight. Yeah, not quite the ideal start, but I think, um, you know, a lot of crazy things happened last night, but I think by far the craziest thing is something that went unnoticed was no walks on either side for nine innings. Well, we have to commend you and the man in the box, Garrett Delano, the two starting pitchers who did the lion's share of that work. Delano skies that one to right, but Noah Bridges with a beat on it. He'll make the play. He'll fire to first, and Lytle back safely. Dan has to turn into a bit of a hockey goalie there and just knock it down. He's got the big body going for him. I think he would be a tremendous hockey goalie now that you bring that up. He's got the quickness, yeah. the hand-eye coordination. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe in another life. A big chest. That's a fact. That ball is ripped to right. Bridges with a beat on it again, though. Once again makes the play. This time he'll toss it towards second. And back-to-back -back pitches, back-to-back -back flies to right. That was... Jason Swan, who's now 0 for 4 on the tour and tries to collect the money he threw. Vincent Chapman, the dancing home plate umpire, going to pocket as much as he can. And now the 10 hitter, Dustin Baber, the second baseman, 0 for 3 last night. Will step in and try and do some damage as the party animals scored their run in the first with two down. An errant throw from Jackson Olsen at third. That one chopped to first. Dan's got it. And he's going to go right after Baber, who hits the oh ground. My goodness. Didn't get tagged, but luckily, <laughs> Mr. Electric waiting at first base to retire the side. The Bananas will just need one run to walk off the second inning and tie this game at one point apiece. Second trip to West Palm Beach between the two world tours as we take a look at the rodeo clown Matt Wolf, our resident trick pitcher. Didn't get an opportunity to pitch last night, but you know who did? Mr. Bill Lee. First time he got to throw since collapsing in the Grayson Stadium bullpen last August 19th. How cool was it to see the 76-year-old Red Sox Hall of Famer back out there and dominating with a scoreless inning? Well, I'm, I'm lucky enough in the locker room to be his uh, his neighbor in, uh, in the locker situation. He's got about 17 pill bottles in the top of his <laughs> locker as well as an AED in his seat. Um, so he's all good to go for anything. And it's, it's great to see him in high spirits again and obviously to see him back out on the mound. I think he went one, two, three. No, uh, he could have, yeah. but Dan tried that That's diving right. catch, lost That's it right. in the lights, ended up taking it off the forearm. Yeah, regardless, I mean, he landed a couple of his, his famous EFIS pitches and, and actually kind of pumped a couple fastballs in there pretty pretty warm. And, and today in the outfield at around 6 o'clock, me and him meditated in right field and just laid down and, and relaxed. Um, that was probably the high of my tour so far, so it's, it's good to have him back. How insane is it that you get to meditate in the outfield before ball games with the spaceman himself, truly one of the most legendary characters and a terrific player at that. Three straight years he had 17 wins for the Red Sox. He was an all-star in 1973, pitched games two and game seven of the 75 World Series against the Big Red Machine. I mean, this is one of the greatest characters we have in the game. It's, it's a fever dream. I mean, uh, Tim Kirkton was giving me advice before, I, before my start yesterday on the field, <laughs> yeah. and I lit the ball on fire, and I came in, and Matt Adams told me I was the coolest person that he knows. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know what's happening right now. <laughs>
And uh, it feels like we're in the best timeline possible. Exactly. In all the possible outcomes of our lives here. It's uh, it's pretty surreal having Tim Kirchin in the booth for the third inning last night. He got on, and I'm sorry to everybody who has so much better uh, Tim Kirchin impersonations than I, but if you weren't watching, he got on, and I asked him what he's seen, a guy who's covered baseball since 1979, and uh, he said, Pico, this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life, and I love it. <laughs> and he was just, he was fired up the whole time, so I can't thank Tim enough and his son Jeff Kirchin for making it happen. Now your battery mate for the past six years as well as roommate to add to it, Mr. Bill Leroy was the catcher last night getting a half night off EHing. He was 0 for 3 with the strikeout. Was terrific in last year's world tour. As he hit 391, a tour high 588 on base percentage. That one chopped to short Dalton Cornett. Last night's catcher sails it just about as good as you can. And it bounced off the netting. Bill will be on on the E6. I didn't even realize he was at shortstop until now. There's a lot of moving parts going on currently. Good start for the Bananas, though, to get one and, uh, and even things up one-to-one -one here, hopefully, with uh, Michael Captain Barrel Deeb. And this is the walk-off leader from last year's tour. He had five walk-offs, four of them in four straight at-bats, three of them in Daytona was the homecoming for him, the Bethune-Cookman man who spent four years at Notre Dame as a football player before that. The kind of super athletes we have on both sides. Of course, Jake Skull, the first baseman for the Party Animals, spent three years with the Georgia Bulldogs. Bill's on second. Yeah, they, they said that because it hit the netting, it was out of play, so uh, they wanted him an extra base. Ah, uh, I see. Michael Vitamin D, one for two last night. Hunting his first walk-off of the 2023 World Tour. Brandon Sherman trying to help his defense out. Tough matchup lefty on lefty. Now if ball four is fired here, as Sherm asks Vincent Chapman where that one missed, Bill will score easily from second because all seven fielders have to touch the ball before they can get any of the runners out. So Sherman's going to have to throw three straight in the zone. And... I was just about to say, I, th I think deep swinging. <laughs> if he doesn't like the pitch, he wants to see the next one and like it a lot. Nobody came for a sprint. Everybody came for the ball over the fence, I believe. And the dancing. And you, of course, on the mic. But I guess people don't come to hear you if they're in the stands. <laughs> That's the downside of <laughs> watching the Bananas Party Animals in person. Sherm with a 3-1 coming in. Oh, never mind, 2-2. The scoreboard was wrong, and D punched out looking. Looked like it might have caught the corner. It was about the same spot that I threw that ball on fire last night. <laughs> Couldn't quite get the call that time, though. Oh, my gosh. Uh, speaking of fire, how about the heat you've taken online for not throwing a strike on the fireball? It's a tough world out there, man. I mean... Nobody's perfect, and, and ball, <laughs> balls are slippery when they're wet. I will say that. Oh, man, I don't think I would have thrown a strike. So I'm, I'm not going to be chirping you online or in person. Now D.R. Meadows is going to try to play the hero. The center fielder, one for two with a double last night. Ahead in the count, 2-0. and oh. Was also plunked and scored a run. He scored the game's tying run in the bottom of the ninth inning on the Noah Bridges booming two-run double, who waits in the on-deck circle. Now oh, the doctor in the driver's seat. 3-0 count once again. The Shermanator, one bad one, away from losing this inning. He misses. The party animals are gonna try and fling this thing around the diamond. They won't do it in time. And the Prince of Banana Land, Bill Leroy scores. The Bananas win the second inning one to nothing and tie the game at one point apiece. And it looks like we've got about 15 single ladies on home plate. Who does it better, the Bananas or Beyonce? You don't need to answer that, Kyle. I don't want you to rile the beehive up. I don't know. I think I do it pretty well, and I wasn't out there for it. That was a 3-2-2 that we did a while back, and probably one of my favorites. Aside from the one last night, the one, the one last night makes me feel like I'm somewhat of a pretty good dancer. So I loved it. 
It was so good. I think we got a little bit of a player dance here, Beeks. All right, well, we will sit back, let the boys boogie. We are tied at one point. Well, the boys break it down in an incredible fashion. Good to see the fellas in mid-season form with Maceo Harrison, the Bananas, dancing first base coach, leading the charge. Now we take a look at the score by innings. A couple of one nothing wins for both sides. And whether it was a baseball game or a banana ball game, the score, score would still be the same here. Christian Deerman has the top of the order to work with. There's the Karate Kid offering to Breland Almodova, the pride of Honolulu, Hawaii. And now with a quick 1-1 count. That's a slow tapper foul. Big difference between the speed at which Deerman and Sherman pitch, huh, Kyle? Yeah, it's a, it's a lot different. Deerman, more times than not, is going to be quick, and I think Sherman uh, would be probably deemed or coined the human rain delay of banana ball, if that's a thing. <laughs> But he's good. He fills up his own for the most part, so it, it actually tends to play in his favor, it seems like. And he pitches to contact in his fourth game of banana ball as Deerman gets the strikeout of Almodova, who has plunked his first time. It was the first K in Sherman's banana ball career. Deerman with a low karaoke celebrating his second K of the game. Wow, that was a... That was a karaoke plus throw it around, everybody separate dance move, Sally. I like that. You really can't look away for a second. I, I was drawing a K with a two next to it in my book, and I, I missed the entire show. Now the boys getting together. Looks like we're going to have another boogie. Oh, yeah. Talk about in sync. And the pitch. Mm, just missed. Below the zone to Dalton Cornett, bounced into a 1-6-3 double play his first time. Gotta love a little 3-2-2 action. I think they got a little thrown off because Dalton was in the, the big Dalton Cornett shift. Yeah, Dalton Malden. Dalton Malden was in the Dalton Cornett shift. Sorry for the confusion. Gotta make sure everybody's on the <laughs> same page here. That is ball fourth. Wow, good play by Ryan Cox to save what could have oh, been got him. a really sketchy sprint. The last piece of the puzzle, seventh man to touch it, is Michael Deeb, the left fielder, and Don Cornette able to slide into second base safely. So he's been on the bases three out of the six times so far on the tour. Reason why he's in the two hole. And once again, you just never know with banana ball. No sprints last night. Three sprints in less than three innings tonight. And I think another thing that went um, under the radar last night was Reese Hampton blowing his cleats out and playing yeah. the rest of the game in socks. <laughs> it was phenomenal. I didn't notice it. It's phenomenal. At all. Uh, it's, he said it's the first time he's ever shoeless Joe Jackson run right out of his cleats. Now Reese, the aforementioned man, ahead of the off speed. One ball, two strikes on the party animal center fielder. That one's pop foul, but it's going to be well out of the stadium. He had a two-base sprint his first time, came around to score. The reason why the party animals have a point. It was an unearned run on Christian Deerman, though, as Jackson Olsen at third made an error that would have ended the inning had he not had an errant throw over to first.
2-2 offering coming from Mr. Electric as Split watches from the Burr Mountain Center. This is going to be Eric Jones' ball as he heads towards the Party Animals dugout. He puts it away. Big second out for Deerman. It'll be up to Bryson Bloomer. Three for four with a dinger and a double. Two runs scored, two RBIs, and a stolen base last night. He may not have been the showman of the night, but he was certainly the most impressive man with a bat on either side. Definitely. That ball that he hit uh, out of the park was very reminiscent of the 2021 CPL Championship home run that he hit. Ball you just don't think is ever going to come down. I'm not sure if it did. This could be snagged by a fan. It will not be, though. Bloomer was hit by a pitch back in the first. He's been on the bases four out of five times so far in this young tour. 2-2 two -two coming with two down. Cornette leads off second. That one's going to be bounced towards second. Malden backhand. Throw to first is Aaron. And slamming the brakes, heading back to third is DC3. I'm giving Bloomer an infield single. I'm not sure that you could possibly say that the songbird of our generation was going to get him out on that, and that makes Bryson Bloomer four for five on the tour. Yeah, scorching start. That would have been a heck of a play from, from Dalton Malden there. Shifting over in the hole on the backside of uh, Bloomer is one that I haven't seen before. It's interesting. Off Deerman, who's high 80s, low 90s, but kind of lives off the off speed. Yeah. It is interesting. So now Jake Skull, the first baseman, reached on the E5 his first time. High fly ball. It's not going to do anything crazy, though. Noah Bridges comes in. And a little tumble for fun at the end of it. There you see the best hair this side of the Mississippi. A souvenir for the fans. Deerman able to strand runners on the corners. And the Bananas can take their first lead of the night if they can push one run across in the bottom of the third inning. Noah Bridges, this guy who was a Wilmington Shark in the CPL playing against the Bananas this past summer. Then joined up for the Summer Series. And has been an unbelievable ball player. Yeah, he's a really fun player to watch. And that, that, uh, that ball that he hit the bottom of the ninth last night was something that I've been waiting a long time to see for him to get a hold of the ball like that. We take a look again at Matt Wolf preparing to pop into his barrel, something new he's bringing to the table this year. He didn't get to toss last night. I would put my life savings on the fact that he goes out to the mound within the next five innings. How much exactly, roughly, is your life savings, Pico? No, I mean, I, listen. Not is anything to write home about? or? Yeah, I would write home about it. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah, I think uh, definitely, I, I'm not sure what inning he is going to pitch, but I'm, I'm fairly confident as well that he will be in this game, and if that is not an inning you're going to want to miss. We got a self-pie to the face, a brand new promotion going on on the field. It's called Foodical Chairs. I don't think I quite, you know what, I do understand it. I think it's musical chairs, and if you lose, you get pied in the face. That would be correct, Biko. I'm not a betting man, but if I was, that would be it. Oh, oh, a little <laughs> dirty play. Anything goes in Banana Land. Look clean to me. Good time to thank everybody for tuning in tonight on the YouTube stream. In both chats, we have the chat going crazy on YouTube, as well as the K Club chat. Some people are confused about what the K Club is. It will be back open to folks this coming October. It's the Banana Super Fan Club. And you get the first chance at tickets. This will be for the 2024 World Tour. It's closed for the 20, 2023 World Tour because this entire thing is sold out. We just got over 10,000 folks popped on the wait list over the past two days. It's it harder and harder to see these ball games. Noah Bridges made the last out of the top half. He'll lead it off against Brandon Sherman here in the bottom of the third and now getting after it in the left-handed batter's box. Sherman going to take his time as he's known to do. 
And just misses the outside corner. 1-1 one, one count on the Bananas right fielder who was two for three with a double, three RBIs, a run scored, and a walk off last night and making three for four on the tour. He is seeing beach balls out there. Right of Benson, North Carolina. Has incredible speed and a little synchronized dance with Jake Skull yeah, over on first base. That was good. Dancing in the box, dancing down the foul line. Resident surfer boy turned SpongeBob man. His walkout is, I mean, it gets the people going. That's what they like. Yeah, that's one for the kids, which we're here for the kids. It's last night's hero, the showman of the night, Dalton Molden in the eight hole, second baseman. Two for three with two doubles. Both of them were walk-offs. Both of them, of course, drove in runs. So he had two stakes on the night. And the double that ended the ball game, probably about 405 feet to dead center field, bounced just in front of the 406 sign. Yeah, I was very impressed with the way that he played all night and his performance pregame. That new single that he sung uh, for everybody here in West Palm Beach was quite beautiful. It almost brought a tear to my eye. Yeah, last night it was Miss You, Love You. Tonight he did his best Bill Collins impersonation, a little in the air tonight. That's how I feel, Biko, when I'm not with you. I miss you and I love you. And Maceo's Miley Cyrus impersonation to Wrecking Ball, that's how I feel when I'm not with you. Like a wrecking ball? Yeah, I guess that doesn't make sense at all. It, it wrecks Sounds me. dangerous. It wrecks me. Okay, okay, okay. I, I think what I was trying to say. We'll settle on that. What do to the songbird of our generation? And the Shermster picks up his second K of the night. Now it'll be Dalton Cox, the glove magician. Dalton Cox. Oh my gosh, I love doing that. Wow. It's Ryan Cox, everybody. That's the matchup that everybody's been waiting for, though. It's the middle infield for the Bananas. I just love combining them. I've probably done that 10 plus times. It's a dynamic couple. They're just two peas in a pod. Bridges off for second. The throw from Lytle. Not oh, in he time. Oh, he swam it. He swam it. The ball beat him, but a fancy slide there for Mr. Bridges, and he avoids the tag from Dalton Cornett. A heck of a slide there. Noah was two for two in stolen base attempts across the six games of the summer series last August. And now the inning winning run in scoring position. And all third base coach Adam Byron want is for Ryan Cox to get a hit here. In fact, he's even, oh. A little check swing, excuse me, Bryson Bloomer, smooth as can be. Oh, and he gritties. <laughs> and he, li he literally just hit the gritty <laughs> after making that play. That was the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. He literally just gritty to cross on play. Bryson Bloomer. Bryson Bloomer, you're mad. <laughs> Fire coming out of his eyeballs. We literally cannot believe that. How about this? We have a mini greatest showman. A hug from Jackson Olsen. Famously, this is his favorite movie. We open the broadcast tonight with our little take on the theme song. You had a you had a role in there. You were moving and grooving. I did. I was in a blue polo in the back. They highlighted the blue polos, the front office staff, in two shots. And you could see the people to my right and the people to my left. But I was blocked by the banana nanas. I'm not saying they shouldn't have been highlighted. It's just, you know, I, I drove down a full day early to Savannah from New York. I got a hotel in Richmond, all so I could be in this video. And all, you can only see me in the drone shot. Absolutely no way that I can believe that that was intentional. I mean, Yvonne Trezak, our legendator, our legendary director of whatever he does, creative stuff, edits it. <laughs> I, 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 the only reason he's here is because I bring him in. He's yeah, I thought pal. you guys were buddies. And then he does me dirty when, uh, when I try and be a part of something for him. You hate that. He actually he bet against me last night to throw a ball for the first pitch. And he paid dearly. He did. Dividends. And there's a ball. hot shot back up the middle. Getting the wave around third is Noah Bridges. He will score. Jackson Olsen walks off the third inning. Nanners have their first lead of the night. They're up 2-1. to one. 
the boys are taking foam balls to the berm. The running of the bananas. Everyone is a part of the show in Banana Land as they fire balls out to everybody in the berm. As they celebrate, we will throw it down to our statistical savant, Josh Talevsky, to tell us about sprints. About sprints, one of the features of Banana Ball. This is Sprints 101. Class is in session now. Here's what's crazy. We had no sprints for the first time in banana ball history last night. Now, I did some number crunching, and in the 2022 World Tour and Summer Series, we averaged 6.05 sprints a game. So last night was actually quite an anomaly. Now, if you go to a professional baseball game, what are the chances that you go to a game where you don't see a walk from either team? How about .0037%? I mean, out of a thousand games, that means less than four of them. Okay, and now let's go into a little refresher on sprints again. Of course, if a batter has ball four, he's trying to take as many bases as he can during the walk or during the sprint, and so the bananas have to get it to all nine players on the diamond, get the ball in their hands, and then usually gather towards second base to try and record an out if he's trying to stretch it into a two-base sprint. That's all I've got for you on sprints today. Biko, I'll turn it back up to you. Thank you so much, Josh. It's insane how small the chance is that you would see a game with no walks at an MLB game. I mean, you go to a thousand games, it's gonna happen less than four times. It was pretty much the perfect way to open the 2023 World Tour. And Kyle, I have to thank you for your services in that. Yeah, I feel like I, I kind of did it justice to myself because me and uh, head coach Tyler Gillum were having a conversation Wednesday at practice before we left for West Palm Beach, um, trying to set the number of walks we thought would happen in a game in order for pitchers to get pitchers beeps. We set it at four, which I thought would never happen. <laughs> and then we go out there the first game and put up a big old zero, so that was pretty fun. Well, as Josh said, I mean, we averaged six sprints a game last year. And now, a little dusting off of the plate, and Vincent Chapman moving his body like a cyclone. <laughs> He's throwing off all the gear. He's lost his mind and shaking it like only that little man can. I mean, he, he, he puts his body in some position so quickly like I've never seen. Uh, God. Boy, are we blessed to have found this man online. He stands no taller than can be 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, but he's got the heart of a lion and the confidence of a 6'5", of a, of a man. It's, it's, a, it's phenomenal. You are right. He's loud. He's boisterous. He's one of the biggest characters in Banana Land, which is really saying something. Is Tanner Thomas, the party animal's right fielder, hanging tough. He struck out against his roommate from last year, Christian Gearman, his first time up, and he's got two Ks for his troubles. Third strike out of the night for Dearman, and that has to feel a little extra special when you get your buddy Tanner Thomas, who I mentioned earlier, beat Dearman in all six pregame ceremonies we had last year. He didn't just beat him. I mean, he he wiped the floor with him. Let's, let's, let's cut through all that right now. High fly ball off the bat of Joe Lytle, who throws his bat in disgust. And it's going to be snagged out in center by D.R. Meadows. Two quick outs for Deerman here in the top of the fourth. Lytle had reached on a one-base sprint his first time. Yeah, it was truly, it was such a demolishing act from Tinder Thomas over Mr. Electric Factory. I'm going to be keep completely transparent. It made yes. me embarrassed to be on his team. Yeah. Dearman's. <laughs> I mean, it was just, I mean, we knew every week that we were going to lose the pregame before the game even started. It's Garrett Delano, the DH, who flew out to right his first time. Yeah, it got so bad that Dearman had to have a little therapy session at the end of the year. Oh, he's going to propose to EJ. You can find online, and it's a yes! He said yes. How about them apples? 
a really quick two minute and 14 second one, two, three inning for Christian Dearman. He's now engaged to his catcher, Eric Jones. Everything going right for the Electric Factory, Mr. Electric. And it's Hey Baby time here in the ballpark of the Palm Beaches. Four strikeouts on the night for Dearman, who has given up three sprints, but he's done a heck of a job stranding guys on the bag. Just one unearned run. That lost the first inning. And works quick. He's been truly terrific. Lisa in the K-Club chat said she loved the tutorial on, on sprints. Gary joining the club as well. Caitlin with a really good point that Vincent has one banana shoe and one party animal shoe on. He does. He's got all kind of custom gear now. Everybody's all decked out in their own in their own regards. Yes, yeah. we're gonna have a new man to start the uh, bottom of the fourth, which is actually probably one of my favorite new pitchers on the tour. Carson, Carson Goldsmith. Goldsmith. He really brings some a lot of fun uh, to the game and does things very differently than anybody I've ever seen. And that leads me into my question that I had for you, Biko. Who had the quickest inning of the night last night? Do you have that off the top of your head? Oh, baby. You know what? You put me on the spot. I should have, and I do. It's DJ V Invader. He had a two minute and seven second inning. So Dearman was just seven seconds off that mark. That's pretty good. You had the second quickest inning on the tour last year at a minute 50. Trailing only Lucas Kelly by five seconds. Yeah, I gotta get down there. Then Jared Donaldson, Donaldson in the Summer Series had a 129. And then three guys, Brett Helton, the man you see right there, is one of them in across the two scrimmages we had. Had a 107, a 109, and a 112 in the scrimmages. All would have been records if they were official games. Yeah, we had some guys really moving and grooving on the mound, which was happy to see. It was it's really cool to see the new guys really buying in um, so early in their first couple scrimmages and and uh, not being afraid to work quick and try stuff that they never tried before. Um, I believe Breland just climbed out of the stadium and is hanging out with kids on the berm. Well, that's that's what he does. The style in Hawaiian, always fans first. The line on Brandon Sherman, he goes three innings. Gives up two hits, two runs, only one of them earned. Loses the second and third inning although it was not his fault. It was an E6 in the second that caused that inning to go south for him. And now the pride of Austin, Texas on the bump. Carson Goldsmith breaking out the satchel page on the first offering. We got a little bit of field change up. It looks like Reese Hampton's in it short. We got Breland Almodova sliding over to center and we've got Jason Swan at left. Everything else appears to be the same for the leadoff hitter for the Bananas, Eric Jones. Yeah, top of the order for the Nanners. Jones bounced back to Brandon Sherman his first time up. Carson Goldsmith, a crafty man on the mound. His quick 2-2 count on the Bananas catcher. Four seam slider, curveball, and an EFIS, and he messes around with what he calls his arsenal pitches, as there's a high fly ball deep to left field. That ball's out of here! Eric Jones leaves the building. He walks off the fourth inning with a mammoth shot to left. Nanners lead three points to one. Keep it up with the Joneses. What a shot to the Nanners backstop. The boys got the limo. Limbo going out at home plate. And as much as I love to see us score another run, Pico, I believe that that does bring our time here in the booth to an end. A perfect way to end three innings at the booth. Mr. Kyle Lewis, as we take a look again at the shot on the hanging bender for Eric Jones. We'll have to do this again. We've only got 85 more games to go after this. A couple more chances at it, Pico. I love you so much. I also saw a message in here. Matty P, our former financial director, said Vico plus Kyle I love you dash Matty P I love you more Matt see you guys um, in Daytona the love is coming right back from me to you Kyle as he exits stage left you see Jared Donaldson and company delivering some roses 
to fans in the stands, usually trying to find a young lady as Donnie has been successful. Two out of two tries so far, make it three for three. What a shot from EJ. Guy can really swing the lumber. It's honestly astonishing to me that he's not in minor league baseball. I know it's astonishing to him as well as Danny Hosley takes over on the bump for the Bananas. Eric Jones spent four years at Davidson College. Absolutely teared the cover off the ball each year. Senior year hit 352 with nine bombs in 51 games. Ended up going into the Minnesota Twins organization. With the Twins, he hit 353 across 37 games. Then COVID happened, that kind of messed up the whole development, and before he even got a chance to play another game for him, he got dropped. Then he got signed by the Seattle Mariners going into 2021. What did he do there? Well, son of a gun, if he didn't do it again. He hit 353. That was across another 35 games for his troubles while well, he was dropped again. He ended up being the bullpen catcher for the Mariners this past summer. He is truly a terrific talent. And if I were one of the 30 Major League Baseball teams, I would be looking at what he's doing in Banana Land against really impressive pitching. Last year on the tour, he had 353, a 523 on base percentage. And saying, uh, this is a guy that at every level he's been in has proven he can tear the cover off the ball. And I'm sorry, he hit 390 with the Twins. That was across 20 games back in 2019 before they dropped him. Even better, I sold him short. Mind boggling to me. Jason Swan gets three pitches and three strikes. And a couple big kicks from Danny Hosley and his catcher, EJ. Good start to his bananas career for the pride of Vienna, Georgia. Takes out the five-year Georgia Southern product in quick order. And now Dustin Baber in the 10 hole. The second baseman, 0 for 3 last night, 0 for 1 tonight with a ground down. Quickly behind 0 and 2, five pitches and five strikes from 1 8 on the bump. He is not messing around. He's three strikes away from an immaculate inning as Baber has to find some pine in the dugout. One swinging and one looking. Now we go to the top of the order. Breland Almadova, the left fielder. A strikeout and a hit by pitch so far tonight. Hosley on the bump, started his college career at Patrick and Henry Community College, couple years there, transferred to Norfolk State, spent 2020 and 2021 at Norfolk before playing at George Mason this past spring, where as a hitter, he hit 269 across 52 games with five homers. Guy we saw in the three hole for the Bananas last night. Went 0 for 2 with a hit by pitch. But just like McFadden, who pretty much trades spots with Danny, one of them will be in the bullpen, one of them will be DHing pretty much every other night throughout the tour. As Mr. Hosley throws away the hat for the 2 2 offering. Slow tapper, Jackson Olsen. Just in time! The TikTok superstar completes the one, two, three frame for Hosley. And the Nanners who have won three straight innings looking for another walk-off. We'll throw it down to Jesse Cole. It's time for a brand new promotion. Let's see what's going on. It's our pregnant woman dance-off, fans. And your name? Chelsea. Chelsea, how many weeks? I'm 33. 33 weeks pregnant, let's hear it for her. And? Charlie. Charlie? 35. 35 weeks. And Amber, 
All right, five months, five months, ready to go, eight months. We need a song to set this dance because you're going to determine who is the best pregnant dancer here in West Palm Beach. Shark, let's get some good music for this. Yes. All right, here we go, ladies. A little push in my salt and pepper, let's dance, here we go. possibly could have picked out better music for it. Carson Goldsmith back out on the bump for the party animals. Faced one batter tonight. Gave, off, gave up the fourth inning walk-off homer to Eric Jones. Now he's got two, three, four in the order. Doesn't get easier from here. Dan Ober's the first baseman. Grounded out to third his first time up. A little something extra from Goldie. And Dan ahead, two balls, no strikes. Eater in there, that'll do the job. Goldsmith out of Stephen F. Austin High School. Probably the best name for a high school you can find in the country is Dan. Shoots that one to right, and a heck of a running snag by Mr. Tanner Tinder Thomas. Covers a whole lot of ground, does the former Hokie. 2018 and 2019 Collegiate Banana. And Roll Seven Nation Army means Dakota McFadden. He's getting his second AB of the tour. See what he did last year. He was terrific. Across 14 games at the dish, two bombs to go with that 346 batting average, 452 OBP. And fouls that one out of play. D Mac, the professional banana for the One City World Tour, the way this whole thing began. Back in 2021, was two games in Savannah, two games in Mobile, Alabama, at Hank Aaron Stadium. It was a banana last year as well, of course, as I just mentioned. He's got incredible pop. Hit the power showcase twice throughout his college career. Started at Wake Technical Community College. Ended up at Keystone College, finishing up in 2018 and 2019. And a cut and a miss. There's Carson Goldsmith's first strike out of the tour. Billy Squire, and clap from the whole crowd. Mean Bill, means Bill Leroy is introducing himself. The numbers speak for themselves as the fans get in on the action. Bill, the extra hitter tonight, he's done an E6 his first time. Came around to score on the DR Meadows Second inning walk-off single.
Well, their special offering is the heater's just a bit high from Goldie. Started at Northwestern State and the University of Louisiana. It was a 28th round draft pick by the Minnesota Twins back in 2012. One bad one away from our fourth sprint of the night. Bill's hacking and the count will run full. Twins drafted Goldsmith saying he was raw and they were gonna turn him into a pitcher. Drew Hart thought they were gonna develop him. Long story short, as Bill fouls that one off, could be caught by a fan. It's not. Because he had some elbow trouble and in 2014, after having surgery, they let him go while he was rehabbing. That's a shot to dead center. Reese Hampton's got a beat on it. And he can't make the catch. Boy, that is a rare one. As it looks like. Party Animals have actually switched their entire field up. It's now Breland Almadova in center. He's the one who gets the E8. Now Michael Deeb has a chance for a walk-off. Looked like it was gonna be an easy breezy one, two, three frame for Goldsmith. This one could be caught by a fan, but it ends up clanging on top of the media suites. Oh, split! <laughs> you actually scared the heck out of me. Did not know you had snuck up behind me. Ooh, that's a good massage as there's a cut and a miss. And Goldsmith picks up his center fielder. Strikeout of Michael Deeb as I get pounded in the back by our mascot. And it is still a 3-1 lead for the Nanners as we head to the sixth inning. Got a little family feud going on on the field. We'll see what the young professor's up to. If anyone knows the song, you have to run up to the microphone. The first one to get it right will win. And if you win, you get an opportunity to pie a member of the other family in the face of your choosing. Now that we understand the rules, families, are we ready? Then Shark, let's hit the first song. Amanda, you're the winner. You, no, Amanda, this is you. You have to do this. You have to do the honors. You get to choose. This is going to get weird, ladies and gentlemen. Who is she going to pick? We've all consented. Let's make it happen. Let it rip. Three, two, one, go. Make it happen. Go. Mom, on, mom, action. Here we go. Boom, goes the dynamite. One more so song. Gentle. All right, back to your places. Song number two. Here we go. This is the last one. This is all the marbles. Who knows it? Who knows this song? Oh, you gotta know this one. Robert's family, you gotta go. Oh, well. I'm gonna oh, give well. it to the Robert's family. She said it's journey, don't stop believing. You get to get a little redemption. Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? She's going for, oh my goodness. We've got a tie in Family Feud, banana style. All right, no ties in Banana Ball, but we can get them in our own version of Family Feud as the entire Nanners team relaxing out there. Danny Hosley now ready to rumble. The top of the sixth inning.
Gone's an hour and five minutes into our two hour game. We're on a good pace. Two, three, four for the party animals. Dalton Cornett, 0 for 1, grounded into a double play his first time. Two base sprints. Ended up stranded on third in the third. Quickly behind 0 and 2. There's a high fly ball, deep to right. Noah Bridges loses his hat, finds the ball. And what a smooth ending to that one. Cool as can be. All his fielders join in on the fun, just like how they started the inning. And now it'll be Reese Hampton, a two base sprint, run scored back in the first inning, the only inning the party animals have won this evening. And popped out in foul territory to his good buddy Eric Jones behind the dish. Osley has retired all four hitters he's faced so far. Hampton, the switch hitter. Swing it from the left side. Another 0-2 count. Danny has been filling up the zone. Tiger Bananas field all lounging. And a cut and a miss on the bender. None of his fielders have to get into a ready position. Third strikeout for Danny Hosley, who is looking phenomenal in his banana ball debut. If his fielders are gonna have some action, this is the guy who's gonna give it to him, Bryson Bloomer. One for one with a hit by pitch tonight. Four for five on the tour including a homer, a double, two runs scored, two RBIs, and a steal. There's a high fly ball, but off the end of the bat. And D.R. Meadows there to snag it. Six up, six down. Across two scoreless frames for Mr. Hosley. And we are joined by Bananas owner, Jesse Cole, down on the field, the man in the yellow tux. Jesse, no sprints last night, first time in Bananas history. We've seen three tonight. You never know what you're gonna get in this game. Yeah, I'm proud of these guys. I mean, they have to deal with some adversity today. You know, it's a challenging game, and they're not, you know, to see what's happened the last few innings, we still have a chance to play nine innings in two hours. So uh, it's great to see what they're doing right now. We've had three straight walk-offs from the Nanners between the second and the fourth inning. How cool is it to see innings end in such wild celebrations? That's what makes Banana Ball special, to see games end that quick. You never know what's going to happen. See Eric Jones' absolute moonshot. Boom! Inning is over and walk-offs. I think it's one of the best parts of Banana Ball. We've got Matt Wolf, our rodeo clown trick pitcher, who will be coming in within the next couple innings. DJ the Invader is lurking after a 1-2-3 frame last night. How exciting is it, is it for you to see these guys coming in? Well, to see what's happened with Matt Wolf last year and come in, become a trick pitcher, throw pitches people have never seen on a baseball field. And I heard he's got even more tricks up his sleeve, things that I don't think any pitcher in the world can do. So he gets his debut later on tonight. And DJ Invader, hey, no one knows who he is. And I'm very intrigued, but he can pitch, and we're excited to see what happens. Yeah, that is a fact right there. Now, Mr. Dearman and Brandon Sherman, our starters tonight, very different. Dearman just about as quick as they come. Sherman takes his time out there, but he gets the job done. How cool is it to see the difference between the two of those guys on the bump? Well, you look at Dearman, what he's done for us for many years now, last year on the tour, always working fast, always doing tricks. He had to deal with a little adversity today uh, with some plays and, and walks, but now Sherman, his first debut, pitching in front of 8,000 fans, this unbelievably electric crowd. That's not, that's not, uh, you know, he's not used to that. And so obviously to see what he's done, I'm proud of him. I think uh, it's just the start for Banana Ball. Yeah, big difference between the Zaria League in Brooklyn and Banana Land. Jesse Cole, it's so great to hear from you, man. Enjoy the rest of the game. I uh, love you, Bigo. Right back at you, stud. There goes the man in the yellow tux. Awesome for him to take some time out of his busy night to share his perspective on the incredible show that he has created, the greatest show in sports. And the talent has reached an all new level here in 2023. This is game two of the world tour. 
loved by Zappos, and we are so happy to have you watching along on YouTube. Jake Le Lealios on the bump making his tour debut, no hat needed for the new man on the bump, third guy to pitch tonight for the party animals. Right at Tucson, Arizona. Well, he says little Jake was not too interesting. He used to have long skater hair and wore Nirvana shirts to school. Boy, he has come a long way from there at a Panoma Pfizer and was playing in Tucson in the old Pecos League a couple years ago. Most of his career is actually in the hitting department, but he is a fantastic man with the ball in his hand on the bump. And he's got DR Meadows, Noah Bridges, Dalton Malden. Six, seven, eight in the bananas order. Trying to keep them off the bags and most importantly, away from home plate. One run from the bananas would give them a pretty commanding four points to one lead. As we're in the back half of this ball game. DR the right fielder, a single back in the third inning. Ended up scoring the inning winning run on the Jackson Olsen walk off knock. 2 2 is nubbed towards second. Faber between the legs. Oh man. Loves to call himself Derek Ginger. The fantastic leprechaun themed second baseman is terrific with the mid. 2018. Gold Glove Award winner in junior college. As Noah Bridges started this tour off red hot. Party animals getting a little dance action of their own. They bring the entire outfield together for the group dance. And after all that, a 1-1 count on Mr. Bridges, who's three for four on the tour. Had a single back in the third. I'm sorry, he is the man who scored on the Jackson Olsen walk-off single. DR was one for one with a walk-off single of his own as Noah drives that deep to left. But Breland Almodova back in left field after spending some time in center. Party Animals just making it as difficult on me as possible. Moving their fielders around willy-nilly from inning to inning. And the pride of Honolulu puts that away for out number two. Good start for Lealios. Now Dalton Malden, songbird of our generation. Strikeout back in the third. After a two for three, two double, two walk off night in the World Tour opener. You see in last year's tour, the batting average not incredible, but the on base percentage above 400 is truly what matters. You do that for your career, you'll never stop playing. Heck of a man with the mitt at second base to boot. Now a 1 2 count. Lealios throws a lot of heaters and work a 12 6 curve in there and toss in a cutter from time to time. Fastball is always a four-seamer, but he's got a lot of backspin as that one's tapped foul. It was off Dalton Malden in the box. I'm guessing, although it was clearly picked up by Joe Lytle in fair territory. I'll talk to Vincent Chapman, a world-famous dancing umpire. See what the explanation is there. If it didn't touch Dalton, it was clearly a fair ball. And it's a strikeout anyway. Good for... The stats of Lealios, who breaks off a sweet dance. I love that. One, two, three frame to start his party animal's career. He's able to hold serve. And it's still a 3-1 Bananas lead as we head to the seventh inning. And what a fun entrance we have here. Jesse Cole out on the field to explain. Well, we 
We got no audio from Jesse, but it is our rodeo clown, the trick pitching extraordinaire, Matt Wolf the fifth. Out of Joy, Oklahoma, he came to the Bananas tryout last year and blew us all away. It was truly the highlight of the day. He's also a paramedic and firefighter full time. So he's flying in to about 50 of our stops on the tour and we'll have to work the rest of them in Oklahoma City. Matty was pretty effective for his first foray into trick pitching last year. Sure, he had a 7.56 ERA across eight and a third innings, but it's mostly because of a couple bad outings. He really shined towards the end, got into a groove. He's got over 18 pitches. Last year, he was wearing an armband like a quarterback would. This year, he's gotten them all nailed down in his noggin. He's gonna have Jake Skull, Tanner Thomas, and Joe Lytle. And as Skull, the first baseman, steps up to the dish, I'm joined on the broadcast by the man fresh off the field, who was replaced by Matt Wolf on the mound, Danny Hosley. Good to be here, Biko. Good to be here. Hey, fired up. I appreciate the speed at which you made it from the field up into the broadcast booth. No problem. It was a uh, first outing as a banana out there, and my goodness, talk about just an electric atmosphere we have here. I mean, it's an unbelievable experience. Never pitched in front of this many people, but I mean, it's indescribable as Matt Wolf does a little dance up there. Yeah, well, it's raining tacos, so obviously he's gonna boogie. Don't let the graphic dissuade you. It is Skull as that one gets the outside corner. He thought it was ball four. He was ready to start his sprint instead of payoff pitch coming. And off the inside, of Ooh, the old the bat, glove flip to first from Ryan Cox. His second trick of the evening. He's been fantastic, and, and speaking of fantastic, his school's now 0 for 3. Fly out and an error his first two times up. Tanner Thomas, couple Ks against Christian Deerman. He's excited to see him off the bump. What a debut for you, Danny. Six men faced, six up down, six of them down, three of them struck out. I mean, how can you explain such a, an incredible start to your Nanners career? I mean, really just the support of everybody. Everybody's been super supportive since the day I got here. Um, they've really had trust in me, the coaching staff, Viro, Gillo, my teammates, the man, EJ and Bill behind the dish, they just make it easy for me. So, I mean, I'd also just like to point out right here, Tanner Thomas has some of the best hips I've ever seen on the field. I mean, he gets in there on his walk-up song and, oh, and just owns it, absolutely <laughs> owns it. I mean, oh. And he pays the price for his hips refusing <laughs> to lie. And he has a hard 90 to first right through the bag. That's good form. Great form. So on base for the first time tonight after a two for, two for four performance an evening ago. Party Animals looking to make something happen. They won the first inning one nothing. Dropped the next three innings by the same score. And that one dug towards third. Flip to second Play. one. Cox Got to him. first. In time! Boy, bang, bang over at first base. Randy, our base umpire, makes the call and celebrates with Vincent Chapman. I've never seen umpires celebrating together after a play. Don't think I've ever seen that before either. That's that's a first. I also haven't seen a barrel on the field or the pitcher leaving with it. So the Bananas can walk off the seventh inning. They already lead three to one. We'll be back with Danny in a moment. For now, Josh Talevsky with another report from the field. That's right, Biko. It's Saturday night, and you know, I know that means a lot of people are busy, so we've got some people just now tuning in. So what we're gonna do is refresh people with a little bit of banana ball rules. Now, first off, what's important to know, every inning counts, and I'll show you why. Now in figure one, if the bananas score one run in an inning and the party animals score zero, it's the bananas who get a point for that inning. Now in figure two, if the bananas score one run but the party animals score five, the party animals are the team to get just one point even though they've scored five runs, and that knots the game at one apiece. 
Now, you get to the ninth inning, and of course, every run counts as a point. Also, we can't forget, if a fan catches a foul ball, that means it's an out. And that doesn't just mean one foul ball. If fans catch multiple foul balls in the game, they still count as outs. So just a great way to get the fans involved in this game. And of course, we'll get into showdowns. There are three rounds of showdowns, and the goal of showdowns is if the game is tied, it's a batter versus pitcher showdown, and the batter must try and score. In round one, it is the pitcher, the catcher, and the fielder against the batter. Round two, pitcher and catcher versus batter. And round three, pitcher, catcher, and fielder versus a batter with the bases loaded. And all the runs scored in showdowns count as points. So, here's the kicker. If there is any home run hit out of the park, that ends the game. It's a walk-off, and that team wins. And that's how showdowns can go sometimes here in Banana Ball. Miko, I think that's a pretty good refresher for the new folks. I'll turn it back up to you. Thank you so much, Josh. Always good to hammer home the intricacies of our new take on baseball that has swept not just the nation, but the world. Sold out 2023 Banana Ball World Tour, 87 stops. Waitlist for tickets north of 500,000 with over 500,000 fans getting to see this thing in the first place. Jake Lealios back out for his second inning of work. It's gonna be the bottom of the order, 9-10-1. Cox, Olsen, and Jones swinging it. Danny Hosley still with me in the booth for another half inning as that one is fouled off. Ryan Cox has fouled out to a fan before in his career. Happy to see that one leave the confines of the ballpark of the Palm Beaches. Shortstop from the Nanners grounded out to third his first time. Another 0-2, another pop up towards the stands. This could be an out. It's caught! Yes! Ryan Cox has been retired by a fan for the second time in his career. First time on the 2023 tour that a fan has made it out and showered with booze for their hard work. You don't see that too often. Honestly, it was a great catch. Unfortunate it was a banana, but shout out to the fan that made that catch. It was a we'll good catch. We'll see if we can take another look at it. There's the swing from Coxie into the stands. Clean snag. Unbelievable. I know most folks out there wouldn't like to see it happen to a banana, but we love to see it in the business. Now Jackson Olsen, he cranks that to right center. Big time trouble. All the way to the wall. Banner's third oh, base. Get on your horse, Jackie. He's digging for three. He's got a stand-up double, and the inning winning runs 90 feet away. Two for two night for the TikTok superstar. Now three for five on the tour. It's gonna be up to Eric Jones, the catcher, one for two. Ground out his first time. A fourth inning walk-off bomb. He squares that up to deep right. This is gonna get the job done. Tanner Thomas snags it, but tagging and scoring easily from third is Olsen. Nanners take a four to one lead. And look at that gritty, my God. Big time celebration from the Nanners, grittying all the way up the right field line. Danny, before you have to go, buddy, just explain to everybody what it feels like making your Nanners debut on the mound in front of a sold out 8,000 plus crowd. I mean, I've played in front of big crowds before, but none as energetic and lively as this. Everybody's engaged, having fun, watching baseball, and dancing while doing it, so it's unbelievable. I mean, I can't thank you enough, Vico, for having me up here and uh, thank the fans enough for just for just supporting everybody through and through, so thank you very much. Thank you. It goes both ways, buddy. Thank you so much for popping up to the booth. Good thank luck you, on the Vico. Rest of the tour. Appreciate it. There goes Danny Hosley as Tanner Thomas. Leads a little dancing in the dark over here on the third baseline. Some folks blindfolded. They think they're still in the competition, but slowly being taken out. I love that move. And as 
the guys give it their all down on the field. Party Animals pitcher Dylan Porter joins us on the broadcast. Dylan, your first task describing what the heck we're seeing out here. Oh, it's, I mean, it's honestly hard to describe. <laughs> um, it's a tough one. Uh, we, got, we got good vibes. We got a guy dancing down there. He's having a great time. That's what this is all about. <laughs> Speaking of good vibes, you made your world tour debut for the Party Animals last night. An excellent relief appearance. Uh, you know, you, you joined us for the first time on the Summer Series on the Banana side this past August. What was it like pitching here in the ballpark of the Palm Beaches in front of these insane crowds? It was, it was electric. It was crazy, honestly. I had so much adrenaline going in there. When I got onto the mounds, I see Ann Keel out there and <laughs> MLB All-Star. I, I, was, I was just so fired up. The ball is coming out amazing. Yeah, I mean, one of the most memorable moments of my career, definitely. A little different from the crowds at Santa Barbara City, Washington yeah. State. <laughs> We have DJ the Invader getting loose on the mound. So Matt Wolf, the rodeo clown, done after one frame. An excellent job by him. Helped by the 5-4-3 double play after he plugged Tanner Thomas. And now the mysterious man, we only know that his name is DJ and that he got a 1-2-3 inning last night. Have you been able to gather any other intel on the fella in the super superhuman uh, space mask. He's got a, he's got a great changeup. That's Pairs right. out with the fastball very well. I mean, he's a tough AB. We got a ton of talent on both sides on the mounds, and he fits right into that. First pitch swinging, and it is a flare out to Dalton Molden at second base. So Garrett Delano, the DH, now 0 for 3, adding to a fly out and a K on his evening. And Jason Swan, the nine hitter, the extra hitter, Trying to get his first hit of the tour. 0 for 2 tonight, 0 for 3 last night. Five-year man out of Georgia Southern, just like you, Dylan, debuted in the Summer Series on the banana side and traded the yellows for the black and pink. Taps that one to third. Jackson Olsen across the diamond in time. And once again, two quick outs for the invader. And now, the closest thing we have to Justin Bieber in Banana Land, Dustin Baber, will try and solve the mysterious riddle that is DJ the Invader. First pitch bender in there for a strike as we look in from the banana panorama, our drone in the sky. Quick 0-2 count on the party animal second baseman, a strikeout and ground out so far tonight. Wow, the Ooh, invader like looked like he landed. <laughs> Seems like some kind of message from outer space right there. He gets his first strikeout of the tour. Across two nights, six up, six down for the invader. And we will take our 4-1 game into the bottom of the eighth inning with still 32 minutes to play. These games have been flying. And how about a minute and 34 seconds for the Invader, the quickest inning of the tour so far. That's the second fastest inning of all time. Just five seconds behind Jared Donaldson in the Summer Series. And it's the quickest inning in World Tour history. He beats Lucas Kelly, Party Animal Southpaw from last spring by 11 seconds. We got a little banana lution of dance. See how many different ditties the boys can break out in a minute and a half. Danny Hosley you see right there next to Cowboy Kyle. Boy, he is all over the place. Six up, six down for his work tonight. Three strikeouts, an inning on the broadcast. And now he's dancing on the Bananas dugout. Good to see Kyle and Jared Donaldson moving it and grooving it as well. It's gonna be two, three, four for the Nanners here. In the bottom of the eighth inning, Oberst, McFadden, and Leroy as we take a look high above the ballpark of the Palm Beaches. This has been the tail of the tape. Party Animals jumped out to an early lead, but runs 
and walk-offs for the Nanners in the second, third, fourth. And seventh innings, two of them by Eric Jones. First baseman for the Nanners, ground out to third and a fly out to right. And a quick strikeout for Big Jake Lealios. Yeah, that's a fact. Jake came in, got a quick foul out to a fan, but then the triple from Jackson Olsen, sack fly from Eric Jones, and did his first inning of the tour quickly. Now he has his first party animal strikeout and celebrating as he should. DMAC, the DH, 0 for 2, two strikeouts. Lealio shaking what his mama gave him. Pretty different environment from any form of baseball you've played for, uh, you've played in in your illustrious career so far, huh, Dylan? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I love the, love the fast pace. Yeah, I mean, keeps the fans engaged and yeah, it just makes the, the whole atmosphere just yeah, super electric. It's it's awesome. And it seems like we've reached a new level here because back-to-back -back nights were heading towards the ninth inning with plenty of time left on the two-hour time limit. Yeah, yeah, and we're only down three runs. The beauty of it, we can come back in the ninth. That's a really good point. Every run in the ninth inning counts as a point. So it's also important here for Lealios to get these two outs without it becoming a four-point deficit. Got the heart of the order, two, three, four. That one back up the middle. Grabbed by Cornette across the diamond. Skull can't pick it. Would have been bang, bang at first. That's going to be the second E6 of the evening for Cornette. One high throw, one low throw. Let's listen to Jesse Cole. Once again, we can't hear Jesse, but I'll do his job for him. Dakota Albritton, the world famous man on stilts, getting his first AP of the 2023 World Tour. Now, what does it take to pitch to a man who is 10 feet, nine inches in the air? I haven't done it yet, <laughs> but uh, I guess uh, you gotta you gotta keep the ball down a little bit, but. Keeping it down, that means like eight feet in the air. So <laughs> It's a tricky one. It, I think, you know, you got to take a little off your pitches. Looks like Lealio still has massive yeah, speed. Yeah, yeah, it's still some juice on it. Like to see that. <laughs> quick. Quick 0-2 count. Now one and two. It's really a windy night. So still it's doing everything he can to stay on his feet. The center field camera can't fully encapsulate what the big man has is he fouls off a tough inside heater. And he's been swinging the ball terrifically in batting practice recently. Yeah, he really has on the stilts and off the stilts. It's, it's, it's incredibly impressive. It seems like a barrel party as now he's found lumber on a couple pitches here. Battling well. He's one for four in his entire career. And he cuts and misses. The speed looked like some backspin. That pitch still coming up. And Dakota with a big gesture to the crowd. Thankful for the cheers as the folks not happy that Lealios gave him his best stuff. <laughs> so Stilts pinch hits for Bill Leroy. That'll bring up Michael Deeb. Left fielder, a couple strikeouts. One swinging, one looking. This one towards the fans, but out of play. Jake with two Ks now in the inning. The inning winning run at first base in the form of Dakota McFadden. Deep behind, no balls, two strikes. And there's the old HBP. Michael Deeb's going to retrieve the ball. Is he eating it? I, I thought for a second. What is that in his hand? 
Yeah, hard to say. Hard and to it, say. It was a baseball, <laughs> but he did such a good job of pretending to eat it. I thought someone had replaced it with an apple or something. Really mystified yours truly. Now the inning winning run in scoring position. DR Meadows already one walk off in the game. A two base sprint back in the second. He lines that one to left, the throw home, not in time! Another walk off for the doctor. The Nanners win the inning one nothing, take a five to one lead as we head to the ninth and final inning of the evening. Your boys have their work cut out for them, Dylan. Yeah, they do. I have plenty of faith though. Plenty of faith. We got a great lineup, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we are now one for two on the night. Picks up his second ribeye. And his second walk-off. And as Dylan mentioned earlier, every run counts as a point. In the ninth and final inning, we've got 23 minutes to play. Once you start the ninth inning, if the time limit hit two hours, it's not like the game is over. We'll play it through. But after an exhilarating 5-4 win for the Bananas last night, a healthy four-point lead. As the party animals will have the top of the order. Just what you want when you need four guys to safely touch old plate. Yeah, gonna see, a, gonna see a lot of fastballs and a lot of splitters, so. Yeah, especially get gear up for those splitters. And Dylan says come that out. because Matt Malatesta is the new man on the mound. Collegiate Banana in 2021 was with us on the World Tour and the Summer Series, so Dylan got to see him up close and personal. And you're spot on. It's the splitter. You'll see a lot of heaters too. And once in a while, you'll catch a fork ball. And it's so tough to make solid contact against that variety of pitches. Yeah, he's just trying to bury that pitch, get guys to chase. And yeah, you just got to know that going up there. The pride of the Garden State. Matt Malatesta, the USCB product, former Shark. Out of Bloomsburg University and Ocean County College in Tom's River before that. Breland Olmanova started the game in left, has played a little center, got back to left. And takes a heater for a strike. 0 for 2 on the night. Make it 1 for 3. Just what you boys need. Men on base. That's a start. That's a start. It's good to remember that the party animals led last night's game by two points going into the bottom of the ninth, and it was a Jackson Olsen one out single that started the three run rally. Ended by the Dalton Molden walk-off double. Breland has started the relay race. He'll need Dalton Cornett to keep it going. The shortstop hit a bomb last night. 0 for 2 with a two-base sprint so far this evening. And a quick 2-1 count on the party animal shortstop. There goes Breland, throw down to second, not in time. Ooh. Sketchy move from the styling Hawaiian. When you need four runs, you kind of just want to go station to station, but Breland can run like the wind, and now one for one in stolen bases on the tour. Ball four, the sprint ensues, and it's a wild throw towards second. The Bananas are gonna have to get creative here. All seven guys have to touch the ball before it's live. Breland will score, DC3 will pull up at second base. He picks up his second ribeye of the tour. And one down, three to go for your guys. Just what we needed. No outs. A man in scoring position. 
as Cornette picks up his second sprint of the evening. And he passes the baton to Reese Hampton. Switch hitting center fielder ahead 1-0 as the fastball misses inside. That one cranked just foul. Hampton 0 for 2. Two base sprint and a run scored back in the first. That's the reason why you guys had one point coming into the inning. Don't trust the scoreboard. It is now 5 to 2, not 5 to 1. It's 5 to 2. And a 1 2 count on Hampton. That's going to be a wild pitch. Cornette scampers over to third. 90 feet closer to scoring. And that one chopped past the dive of Danny Oberst and off the glove of Dalton Malden. It's going to be a single for Reese Hampton. He goes to second on obstruction by Dan Sweet. Oberst. It's gets all going a, to plan. It gets, gets a little interesting now. <laughs> And we got Bloomer up, who had an absolute nuke last night. <laughs> yeah, honestly, it couldn't have gone any better for you thus far. Bryson won for two tonight in HPP. A single and a fly out to deep center field. Takes the heater low. All of a sudden, the Boomer, who as Mr. Porter mentioned, went deep last night, is the game's tying run. There's a high fly ball, deep to left center field. And not able to make the snag as DR Meadows laid out. It's going to be an RBI double for Bloomer. And all of a sudden, the tying run in scoring position as Reese Hampton forward rolls onto home plate. Still no outs. Just how we drew it up. The party animals offense that has been dormant since the first inning has erupted here in the top of the ninth when it matters most. Now Jake Skoll, the first baseman, 0 for 3. And there's the splitter, tough to lay off. What a heck of a pick there from Eric Jones to save the game's tying run from advancing to third base. Low tapper foul. The Bananas with a big shift on Skull. Three guys on the right side of the infield. Shifts have been banned in the MLB, not in Banana Ball. Split makes a nice play on that bouncer. That one just misses. 2-2 Two -two offering coming from Malatesta. There's movement in the Bananas bullpen. And Skull a good job of protecting the plate. Fouled off and well out of the stadium. It's always worth mentioning where the foul balls go. Because if they're into the stands, they could be coming out. That one misses up and in, and the count runs full. Ball four here will easily tie the game as a sprint will ensue. It's up and out. All seven bananas have to touch it before it's live. Bryson Bloomer being waved around by his entire team. Skull will hold up at first base. Four runs. They all count as points because it's the ninth inning. There's still no outs. This game is tied. I think any time the party animals need a game-saving rally throughout the next 85 ball games, they'll send you up to the booth. Yeah, I was going to say, got to spend more time up here. Jake Skull picks up his second RBI of the tour, first of the night. He now represents the go-ahead run. How the turntables. 15 minutes left to play. Once again, the timer really doesn't matter too much anymore. If this inning ends tied, we'll go to tiebreaker showdowns. We'll explain that if we get to it. Josh Chalevsky touched on it earlier tonight when he was explaining some of our more intricate rules here in Banana Ball. 
Tanner Thomas, the right fielder. Fouls it off, he's one for two. Couple strikeouts and a hit by pitch. Skull takes off for second, and it's fouled off. Almodova, Cornette, Hampton, and Bloomer have all scored. That one hit towards second, could be two. Under the mitt of the sure-handed Ryan Cox. And it's falling apart for the Nanners here in the top of the ninth. Looked like it was a sure two outs. And I think the glove magician was thinking about the flip to second base. Took his eye off the ball and all of a sudden runners on the corner, still none gone. Really rare V6 from the man out of Kutztown University. Now Joe Lytle, the catcher. A sprint, a fly out, and bounced into a 5-4-3 DP. Taking off and taking second without a throw is Mr. Tinder Thomas. Now two for two in stolen base attempts on the tour. That one shot to first. Good play by Dan Oberst, who is going to tag out Lytle and an unsuccessful attempt to push the winning run across, but still only one gone. Now Garrett Delano, the DH. For looks three. like a looks like a pinch hitter actually. <laughs> really good call. Yeah, <laughs> we got our player coach Clay Camp up there. <laughs> Slamming Sammy Clay Camp, a banana on the 2021 World Tour, party animal last year. As Dylan mentioned, a player coach this year getting his first AB up in a big spot and pops it up in the infield. Malatesta jams him. Cox retires that one. And what an enormous two outs there for Matt Malatesta. The go-ahead run was on third with none gone. Now Jason Swan's gonna have to be a hero for the party animals. Ahead one and oh. 0 for 3 on the night, 0 for 6 on the tour. What a time it would be for his first hit. But a sprint would be just as good. 1-1 one, one count. And now Matt Malatesta, one pitch away from escaping without giving up the go-ahead run, although the inning has been a disaster thus far. Four runs already home for the Animals. He could avoid it becoming a disaster fee. What a save by Eric oh. Jones, and now we got a rundown. Throw home, in time. Jake Skoll thought he touched home before the tag from Eric Jones. But Vincent Chapman said the club was on him just ahead of his tap of home plate. It was a heck of a stop by EJ. Heads up play by Skoll to immediately break for home because that was bang, bang. Vincent Chapman asking me if it was the right call. We'll take a look at the replay. Him and Kyle were looking up at the booth. We've got the slow-mo. Chris's shot from the third base camera. I think he was out. Yeah, I think he got him. That was I think he bang, got him. Bang, bang. Probably the right move not to slide, weirdly enough, but yeah, I think he got him by a half step. <laughs> Boy, that was reminiscent of Jeremy Giambi and the flip. <laughs> yeah, really, really good call. <laughs> sure, it was coming from the other side of the field, the throw that is, but the tag at home plate is almost a photocopy of it. What a wild, and I mean wild, top of the ninth inning. The party animals score four runs, and because it's the ninth inning, they all count as points. And after the Bananas dominated the first eight innings of the game, they're gonna have to push a run across against Brett Helton, who last night 
had a two-point lead going into the bottom of the ninth. Got the first out, but then Jackson Olsen with a single. Dior Meadows with a hit by pitch. Noah Bridges with a two-run double. And Dalton Molden with a game-winning double. And all of a sudden, three runs had touched home and the Bananas were 5-4 winners. Credit Vincent Chapman again for making the right call at that play at home. It was awfully close. And here is a key part of last night's game-winning rally for the Bananas. Noah Bridges, the right fielder. Dalton Molden, last night's showman of the night, waits on deck. And Noah with a high fly ball to right, he just missed it. Skied it. Tanner Thomas sees it all the way into the glove. Kind of a yeah, sketchy wind, way to catch it. Wind is howling out there right now. Good job battling the elements for Tinder Thomas. Bridges now one for three with the run scored. He was the inning winning run back in the third. Dalton Malden 0 for two with a couple Ks. He's got incredible pop. Had a no doubt bomb home run in the summer series. Missed a three run walk off homer in Daytona last year in the world tour by about two feet foul into the Halifax River. That one chopped to short. Cornette across the diamond and Jake Skoll there on the receiving end of out number two. It's all in the hands of Ryan Cox, the shortstop, and boy would he like to start something fun for the Bananas. An incredible fielder. I mean, just about as good as I've ever seen at short. Had a very rare error. Could have been a double play there in the ninth. Oh, man. And he hits a bomb deep to right. Tanner Thomas is under it and will put it away. <laughs> Warning track power just about. And Brett Helling does the job. The former Pittsburgh Pirates product gets a one, two, three frame. Here's the young professor to explain the showdowns. There are a maximum of three showdowns, ladies and gentlemen. First one will be one hitter versus one pitcher and one fielder. The hitter needs to score in order to take the advantage in the showdown, and a home run will win it for that team. Making his way to the mound, pitching in the showdown for your Savannah Bananas is Matt Malatesta, and backing him up in the outfield is Noah Bridges. Batting for the party animals. Please welcome number six, Reese Hampton. You heard it from the young professor. It's pretty simple, honestly, when it comes down to it. It's baseball's equivalent of a penalty shootout in hockey or penalty kicks in soccer. The hitter needs an inside the park home run. He can't stop going around the bases. Only one man in the field for the defending team. You can't steal any bases in showdowns because there's no first baseman to be on the receiving end. That's why Hampton stayed in the box there. Reese, the center fielder. One for three on the night, has scored twice, and absolutely smokes that foul. Had an RBI two-base sprint in the four-run top of the ninth inning. There's a high fly ball deep to right center. It's going to be trouble. Noah Bridges, the fielder for the Bananas, is on his horse. Reese has great speed. Tough. He's rounding second. Bridges has the ball. Malatesta, the cutoff. It's over his head. What a throw from Bridges. Hit and tagged out by Eric Jones. And a showdown shutdown for Matt Malatesta. The young professor. Savannah Bananas have a chance to win it all. On the mound for the party animals is Brett Helton. Backing him up is Reese Hampton. So, 
Reese got three bases, but he needed four. Thrown out at home. An excellent two-hop chuck from Noah Bridges. Jason Swan is gonna be the fielder behind Brett Helton, who just got a one, two, three, bottom of the ninth. Dan Oberst, an excellent man when it comes to showdowns. He's been here before. Two showdowns in the summer series. He hit two inside the park home runs. 1-0 pitch. Smoked foul down the third baseline. That would have been trouble. Dan over for three tonight. Ground out, fly out, strike out. One one coming. That's a good take on the bender loan away. Peter misses just a tad low. Helton wanted the call. Gotta come after Dan here, or else a chase will ensue. It's a chopper towards short. And it's not gonna do anything. Jason Swan grabs it. Dan will pull into a jug and Mr. Swan waiting for him in between second and third. A little bit of a deep, but nothing to it. We go to the second round of showdowns. It is mono e mono. We are pulling the fielder. It is truly one on one. Matt Malatesto returns to the bump. And heading up to the plate. For the party animals, number three, Dalton Gournett. Big spot here for the party animals shortstop. Gournett had a two base sprint and an RBI in the four run top of the ninth. He's 0 for two on the day, two sprints, a ground out and a fly out. Smoked a homer last night, a majestic blast over the right field fence. No fielder here in round two. Flails and misses at a nasty splitter. He saw it well that time. Smoke foul! Count even at two balls and two strikes. If Dawn can get the ball in play, Malatesta is alone trying to track it down. That one didn't come out of the hand the way he wanted it to. Count runs full. There's been a lot of hullabaloo about the NFL possibly being scripted. <laughs> Kona wrote a better script for these first two nights of the 2023 World Tour. Here comes the first chase. The ball has to go to Malatesta in the first baseline. He's got it. Now he's chasing Cornette. Once Malatesta touches third base, he can throw home. Dalton rounding third, he's coming home. The throw from Malatesta, not in time! Party animals get their sixth point of the night, and they lead for the first time since the first inning. Capacity crowd on their feet. Over 8,000 strong. Batting for yours. 
Savannah Bananas, number 18, Danny Hosley. Danny Hosley tonight pitched two innings, retired all six hitters, struck out three of them, spent an inning as the color commentator right next to me. Now the game is on the line. He has to score on this showdown. Brett Helen back out on the bump. Checks his swing. It's a called strike. And the Nanners down to their final strike. O2. Oh, two. One and two. No one to help Brett Helton if the ball's put in play. Two balls and two strikes. You could cut the tension with a knife. Two-two pitch. It's great to the left. Helton's on his horse. Hosley's around first. Around second. Around third. Brett just got the ball. Danny Hosley sends us to the third. For the Savannah Bananas is Jared Donaldson. Here is the situation in the third and final showdown. The bases are loaded and every run will count. This is as high stakes as it gets, ladies and gentlemen. So get ready for the third and final showdown. Insanity. At the two hour and two minute mark of this game, we've reached our final round of showdowns. After nine innings and two rounds of showdowns, it all comes down to this. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Ho. H to the O V. I used to be Garrett Donaldson comes in. For the biggest pitches. Making his way into the box. Number eight for the party owl, Bryson Boomer. The biggest pitches of Jared Donaldson's professional bananas career. He faces his CPL bananas teammate, Bryson Bloomer. Bloomer homered off of Donnie last night. It was a no doubt shot to left center. 1-1 one, one count. And a swing and a miss. Fooled him on a center cutoff speed pitch. The splitter specialist getting the crowd fired up for a 1-2 pitch. Base is juiced. Noah Bridges back out as the bananas fielder. And the count goes even at two and two. Fouled off because of course it was. Another two, two. It's lined into center field. Jason Swan scores. Jake Skoll scores. Reese Hampton scores. And the throw in, a flip from Donnie in time to get Bryson Bloomer. The bags are cleared. It is nine to six party animals. Here's the young professor for the Savannah Bananas.
Come on, Bananas fans, let's make some noise! This is it. The final at bat. The final moment. The chance to win it all. Here comes number 24. He is DMAC, Dakota McFadden! I couldn't sell, I've set it up any better myself. Thank you, Mr. Young Professor. Oberst off third, DR Meadows off second, Flash the Kid, Malachi Mitchell off first. Dakota McFadden, the hitter. Slow tapper foul. DMAC, the DH, 0 for 3 tonight. Two Ks, reached on an error. And the count, 0 and 2. Brett Helton trying to finish the job. Malachi Mitchell has to score from first to tie it. DMAC has to score to win it. Oh, two, cut out and missed. The party animals win 9-6. Let's go, baby. <laughs> on the 2023 World Tour. Jesse Cole thanking the crowd. His bike doesn't come to us. But he said we have one more surprise. Goodness, we have fireworks! The countdown from 11, because everything in Banana Land is different. I legitimately did not know fireworks was the true finale of this incredible game two of the 2023 World Tour. They go up right, right behind the right field wall. Some red, white, and blue to start. Looks like some paper debris just falling down into the sky. Some pink and green up high to celebrate the party animal's first victory. The red, white, and blue continues down low. Some pink, some little squigglies up top. Kind of looks like tossing some rocks into some still water. We've got some copper, some more blue and pink, a classic blooming firework. Now those with a trail go off in every direction. Similar to a school of fish being spooked by a predator in the sea. Down low, now blue and gold, celebrating Michael Deeb, our Notre Dame product. They pop off, pop off in every which way. Looks like a metal axe striking a piece of metal when it was supposed to hit wood. Sparks flying down low. Some more fish flying off in every direction up high. A bit of a weeping willow there in pink. Just drooping down into the beautiful West Palm Beach sky. Some more rocks tossed into some still water. Oh, a beautiful switcheroony there in the burnt orange. A lot of trickery from our fireworks thus far. Now high in the sky. Some red with a splashing after effect. Some twinkly toes down low. Looks like some tinsel falling off from your Christmas tree. Oh, some beautiful sparkles towards the bottom of the WPB night. Now up high, a big old yellow blast, as large as we've seen thus far. A classic circular form. Down below, the sparkly tidies keep on coming. A little sprinkle to end that part of the show. Some trailers go flying up high. 
They look like turtles coming up from the bottom of the ocean looking for a little breath of air before they go back down for another 30 minutes of bliss in the salty water. Now a multitude of colors breaking off in every which way. No rhyme or reason. It's like dipping Dots when somebody kicks the bottom of your cup and they go flying all over the place. It's got to be the cotton candy flavor of Dippin' Dots, because that's how you get the most colors. And you've got red, blue, yellow, and green down low. Some big green up high. Nice sparklies with some blue. Oh, a big boy flashing into some burnt orange, some copper, some yellow. Another turtle for a grasp of air into some pink with a little shooting star off the end. Oh my goodness, what a beautiful.
Dylan Porter, I can't thank you enough for hanging out with me. I know you've got to jet out to the party plaza. Yeah, yeah, of course. Man. No, it's been great being on, and the win was a great birthday present. It's actually my 25th birthday today. Burying the lead. <laughs> what a terrible broadcaster I am. Happy oh, yeah. birthday, good friend. <laughs> thank you. I really appreciate it. Oh, my gosh. 25 years young, a quarter of the century, and it came so quick. Uh, Dylan, thank you so much again, buddy. Go enjoy the party Awesome. Plaza. Thanks again. There goes DP. A banana in the summer series he is now a party animal for the 2023 World Tour. And a very happy man as his boys have pulled out the victory here in night two of the tour. Welcome back inside our high tech broadcast booth here in the ballpark of the Palm Beach. It's Pico Scala once again. Sorry for my appearance. Uh, I had planned out just enough energy for the ball game and then fireworks started shooting off. You just gotta do what you can do. Uh, what a wild start to this. Like I just said, I can't thank you all enough for tuning in. These last two nights couldn't have gone any better for us in Banana Land. It has been a blessing to watch. The Nanners win night one. An hour and 54 minute, nine inning game, five to four. It was two to two going into the ninth and then two runs from the party animals, three runs from the bananas. That was awesome. All of a sudden, it looked like we had a route on our hands here this evening. Five to one bananas going into the top of the ninth inning, put top of the order up for the party animals. Son of a gun, those boys in black and pink push four runs across. Every run in the ninth and final inning counts as a point. They tie it up, Brett Helton has to be commended. A stupendous job. Gets a 1-2-3 bottom of the ninth. He gives up one showdown score in the second round of showdowns, but his boys, Dalton Cornette in particular, able to do the same. And then Bryson Bloomer drives home three of his buddies in the final round of showdowns, and Helton K's Dakota McFadden with the bases juiced to seal the deal. A 9-6 win for the party animals. So we're knotted up. One win apiece. Two games down, 85 to go, 32 more cities, 19 more states. It's, uh, it's going to be a wild ride. We will be back in action. Excuse me. Well, I take a quick second to check my notes. Yes, that's right, Daytona Beach. I knew where we were going, I just couldn't remember when. Next Wednesday, it'll be another 6.53 p.m. Eastern time, everybody, Eastern time. Uh, we will start the broadcast. First pitch at 7 p.m. sharp in uh, Jackie Robinson Ballpark. It is a beautiful arena for banana ball, a little more intimate than the 8,000 plus, a couple full capacity crowds here in the ballpark of the Palm Beaches, but it's going to be an amazing uh, uh, scene there in the middle of the Halifax River. It's one of the coolest arenas for baseball and banana ball that we have on this crater. So once again, thank you for tuning in. I'm Vico Scala. Thank you to my entire crew. They have shipped down from Savannah with me and put on a phenomenal broadcast. Clayton Franklin, the high home cameraman, the best in the biz. That's why he gets the big bucks. Down on the third base camera, Chris absolutely dominating it. Emerson Elmgren across the diamond on the first base camera. We had Casey out in center field last night. I couldn't tell you who was out in center field tonight. They did a magnificent job. Uh, you know what? I, 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 who was out there, Chad? Who knows? The voice in my head, in my head uh, is, is silent. But whoever it was, they were phenomenal. You, yeah, OK. Well, anyway, uh, thank you, Clayton. We don't know who was out in center. Nick Keldy on the Roman camera and the drones, multiple drones. A phenomenal job. And of course, Josh Chalevsky with the incredible uh, reports down from the field, making us all more knowledgeable and better for it. And the straw that stirs the entire drink, Chad Reese, the coordinating producer of Bananas TV, the man with more headsets on than anyone has ever had in broadcast history, and that's saying something. Uh, just incredible work by you, my friend. For Jared Orton, the executive producer of Bananas TV, Jesse and Emily, folks who sign our paychecks of Eco Scala, saying so long for now. We'll see you Wednesday night in Daytona. And of course, we'll see you later!